it wouldn't have been possible to establish this garden with our chickens. There was a bird flu outbreak up the country and uh, all the poultry was put in confinement. So our previously completely free range chickens had to be locked up. Anyone who knows chickens knows how destructive they can be and, and a freshly tilled bit of earth is just like a magnet to them. You only have to pick up a fork in fact around here and just chickens will just zoom in on you. Which allowed us to establish a garden, but I'll show you what happened to the chicken enclosure. It was winter, they had to be confined. We pretty soon got a rat problem and it was just generally disgusting and our chickens hated it, we hated it. Basically it took me to read Paul Wheaton's post on Permies daily-ish and I kind of cracked and thought that's it, we've got to move these birds. So I'll show you what we came up with. So it, so it all got pretty depressing in here and we hated it and the birds hated it. It took me to uh, read a Permies, Permies daily, one of Paul Wheaton's kind of comparisons on how to how to keep chickens the various different ways. I basically agreed with what he said and that paddock grazing them was going to be the way to go. And we had the space, we had the space, we had the wire, although it was rough. We didn't have a house, but we knew we could make something up. So I'll show you what we did. We're just over the hedge from their winter quarters and we've rigged up some old poultry netting full of holes. We've got a solar panel, trying to put some energy into that leisure back for that. Um, but I wanted to give you a little tour of the facility. So we didn't have a, a mobile hen house, we had to put one together. And she may not look beautiful, but she didn't cost anything to make. It's fully portable. This is all stuff that we had around the place. The, the chassis was a, a horse box that my brother started to make 40 years ago, so I pulled that out of the edge, and these wheels still go round. Even though there's no tyre on the other side, it still goes round, so that's portable in my book. So there was a chest of drawers in the barn there that's doing nothing, so I thought that would make a good kind of place for them to lay. This is a base from a cot, not a kid's cot, came off the old hen house. We should get to the stage where we'll have a little gutter here, we'll do catching water, um, and so the whole place should be self-sufficient. We're still feeding them a little bit because they've gone from being fed quite a lot of grain, so we're just sort of weaning them off that a little bit and getting them back into uh, free ranging again. Uh, it's, a, it's a mix of birds, some really ancient old birds, the light Sussex over there are eight, eight or nine years old. <laughs> So aside from the chickens that you can hear, the hiss in the background is the river, the River Walkham that we're very close to. So let's just see if these drawers work and if anybody's... Yes. Okay, so it's funny, they've moved, they've taken the, they've pinched the straw out of here and put it in here. So everyone likes to get more straw, so I'll put a handful more straw in there. But the laying, that's really good, they haven't been too traumatised by the move. I've just got to be careful there's nobody in here when I open it. Great. So that's working well, and they've got little, oh. I don't know whether we can see this, but we'll see it from the other side. They've got pop, obviously got, they've got pop holes through. Let's go around the other side and have a look in. <laughs> so hopefully you can see the pop holes from the other side. Okay. Hey.